Hi guys! Leah here at my sewing room. I've done a very large amount of freestanding uh, embroidery in the last little bit. <laughs> and I have a store sample and a matching one for my kiddo. Um, so I'm, I'm doing some assembly today, which is not um, normal. I'm not doing any embroidery. That's all done. Um, we've got some other videos on doing freestanding lace, um, but I'm going to talk about a couple key points in this particular design, and um, then I'm going to do some do some construction. We'll talk about things that you might want to have in your house if you're going to make freestanding rocket ships. I'm going to get right into what I'm making for you guys today um, on video. So, um, so what you're looking at here is I'm going to be building. Uh, this freestanding rocket ship for you. So if you haven't watched um, and seen how to assemble some of these OESD freestanding structures, um, it's not hard. It's kind of fiddly. Um, this one has some really unique little things in it. Um, that window um, in the front of the rocket ship is actually vinyl. Um, so it's, it's vinyl. It's cool. Um, there is some uh, freestanding lace where it's just thread like the fire in the bottom and there's a base plate under the bottom of the rocket ship that's just lace as well. The rest of this is what's called freestanding applique. So in freestanding applique you actually have fabric um, as part of your structure so it's not all stitched. It stitches pretty quick on each of these pieces. Um, decorative thread details um, on top of the fabric. So a couple of the big things you're going to be able want to be aware of on this particular design and some of the other OESD ones is that on this one, because there's windows, you're actually going to see into the inside of the structure. And on the legs here, you actually see, um, you're going to see two sides to them. Uh, they kind of fold, um, but you might see inside. So you do want to be aware of what you're using on the back. Um, so through this, I did change my bobbin thread uh, we, with each color change in each step. And, and it worked pretty well. Um, the one really, really fun thing in here that you maybe haven't worked with before uh, is glow in the dark thread. Just um, So in the thread list, OESD is really awesome. Uh, this uh, stitch information is on their website. Um, so you can preview the stitch information before you show up in store to buy the design. So you know, oh, maybe, maybe you don't have glow in the dark thread at home and maybe you don't have that strawberry color or maybe you're not going to make your rocket ship those colors and you need different thread. Um, you can pre-plan pre that before you show up here in store and shop. Um, but glow in the dark thread is lots and lots of fun to work with. Um, there is a ice cord uh, version as well as one from Sulky and a couple different colors from Wonderfill. So I used one of the Wonderfill um, glow in the dark threads for mine because it was orange and I thought it would look really cool on my on my rocket ship. So lots of good instructions all the way through uh, your stitch details uh, when you pull up that design. It tells you how many of each you need to make, lists all your stabilizers and tools. Um, Aquamash Badge Master. Um, one other thing in here that we haven't talked about a whole bunch here on other videos uh, is fiber form. So fiber form is uh, kind of a thick foamy, not foamy, it's kind of a thick, sturdy interfacing. Um, comes in sheets or on a roll, um, but it's going to give your structure um, support and it's going to make it nice and stiff and sturdy. Um, so that's uh, in behind all the applique pieces. And we're going to cruise through our, our directions here just a little bit. Um, but the big thing with the fiber form, um, fiber form is really, really tricky to trim out in the hoop especially on something like the side panels of the rocket ship where there's a cutout doorway and a cutout um, window so on these i'd highly recommend following their directions in here and pre-cutting your fiber form to size before you uh, plunk it in the hoop with your fabric um, you won't run the risk of your fiber form sticking out uh, past where it should be uh, it'll be so much easier to work with <laughs> um, and you can be a lot a lot more uh, conservative with your with your fiber form uh, because of the templates in here. 
So big thing to watch for when you're printing out your layout guide and your template guides and your applique guides at the end here. We are going to cruise past all those instructions. Um, there's instructions of how to print this to scale. Um, you'll want to make sure that you do print those to scale. They'll print on eight and a half by 11 paper. Um, you, yeah, you don't want to auto page scaling. None. Don't scale these, uh, have them at a hundred percent. Um, and you'll be much happier, much, much happier. So you can print all those out and then use the relevant ones. Um, when you go to cut your fiber form and it, it'll give you a rough guideline of how much felt or fabric uh, you need as well. So in here, I I used felt. That's what I was going to say. I used felt, not fabric. Um, felt, felt embroiders really nicely. And you don't get little stringy bits where your fabric frays at the edges. Um, so I used felt. It was it, My rocket ship pieces are thick and if you... They're stiff. <laughs> so, so I did that. Um, I did not use fusible woven with the felt. So that's kind of the big difference there. Um, so the first kind of part of our assembly is doing some sewing. So we're going to shimmy over to my sewing machine, which is on this camera. I'm going to hopefully not um, jam everything here in a minute. We're just going to pick a zigzag and I've got, I'm going to make that a little shorter. Um, I've got uh, just a number one foot on here. If I'd been thinking at home, I would have brought my number 10, but I wasn't. I was not thinking about actually sewing this when I got here today. I was thinking about other things. So um, what we're doing on here is lining up our rocket ship pieces to the nose cone. So these will get sewn kind of all the way around. Oh, I don't have any lift. Oh, I do have any lift. We're set. I have any lift. We're good. Okay. Nope, we're not using the can't, we can't make it reach. I'm just going to zigzag those together. If you're worried about these slipping, you could tape them together. Um, probably some of your wash away tape would be super helpful here. When we're putting this together, we want to make sure we alternate window sections and non window sections. One thing I find is that lots and lots of embroidery is full of flowers and really girly things. Not that flowers are necessarily girly, but they're certainly not for lots of three and four year old, five year old boys. They're not into that. So it's nice to find stuff that uh, could be made for little boys. So after you've made your tiara for your daughter, and your granddaughter, what are you going to make for the other kids? So I need another window. This time my window has a door in it. Okay, so now we have rocket ships with nose cones, all in kind of one big awkward hexagon shaped thing. So a couple more things to do before uh, before you get going on the rest of this here. Um, in the bottom of each uh, rocket panel, um, there's a little tiny hole that we'll need to have a uh, button pressed out or the eyelet pressed out for the base plate of the rocket ship. And my preferred way to do that will be the OSD Perfect Punch. Um, I'm using the slightly older style of this tool. That's the one we have here in store, but there is a new one that came out, arrived this week. And instead of having a little carry case for the punches, uh, they now store in the handle, which I think is super smart. Um, so I'm using about a two millimeter, two and a half millimeter uh, punch to punch uh, this hole out. And this is, there's only six of them you need to punch out. Um, but you'll need to be on top of a self-healing cutting mat when you do this so you don't wreck your punch. And when you go to pick where your 
punching. You want to be centered right in that hole. And it's just a firm press straight down. The whole thing turns and rotates. And it pulls a hole right out through there. I think I have two more to do in no particular order. I pre-did a couple of them before I got started. You want to do this before this is all assembled. Um, otherwise it's going to be really, really, really tricky. So through there. Um, if you were to catch any of these threads, a little bit of fray check would be incredibly helpful at those corners. Easy, easy to add in afterwards. Um, it would be a good idea to trim all your, all your thread bits before you get going here. Um, if there's stuff you can see in behind your windows that you don't want to see, it would be easier to trim them before uh, before you assemble this. Really tricky to trim them after. One big thread in this window that needs to go away. Okay, so where are we headed from here? There's a little more cleanup we need to do. Um, the legs for the rocket ship uh, stitch out flat. These have fiber form in them as well. And they're going to slide into the grooves in this piece here. However, those uh, slits are not cut. So there's kind of a couple ways to cut those. Um, the super awkward, less trustworthy way would be your seam ripper. Um, but like I said, there's fiber form in here and it's kind of thick. So not my preferred choice. Um, if you've never used a tech knife before, this is an Ulfa tech knife and it's got this lovely little blade inside that's like a third of a rotary cutter blade. So on here you could start at the bottom of these and cut straight down and in through the felt. That'll be enough. I need to punch the whole thing out. Punch a couple of those. I'm going to do no, we're going to do the other one the other way. So that's one option. Your other option, if you have a buttonhole cutter, that would work really well as well. These, these openings are about an inch long. You only need about five-eighths of an inch to get your little yellow tabs through there. So I've got the Bernina buttonhole cutter. Here, and that would be a, another really good option. Um, so same thing on this as with your punch tool. Uh, you want to go straight down. In the middle of that essentially buttonhole type opening. So where are we headed from here? Um, from here we are going to start assembling uh, this whole beastie structure into the top of the rocket ship. We'll add in the legs and the fire on the base as we get to the bottom. And I will do my best to keep this in frame. But uh, the other thing you might want, they're called alligator clips. I'm thinking on here I'm going to want alligator clips because I think these are going to probably going to pop out on me as I go. So to assemble here, uh, you're going to be sticking your, oh no, alligator clamp button clips. That's what these are called. Uh, so the alligator clamps are also from OSD. They're designed as a, they're almost like a scissor or a hemostat. Um, but when you open the handles, that little, that little jaw opens at the end. It's a super skinny tube up through here, so you're able to wiggle through all those eyelets and grab the buttonets on the other side and start pulling them through. And this is where these are going to come in handy. If you're worried that these are going to pop apart as you go, I would, I would button them shut. Uh, 
Um, these definitely get easier to put together the more you build. First one might not be the friendliest. First, the first 3D structure I ever built here at work, um, we didn't have these uh, alligator clamps from OASD yet. They hadn't, they hadn't thought of those yet. And I can safely say that it took me about two hours to build the building that I built. It was very long. A long process. <laughs> These alligator clamps are so much faster. I was pushing and pulling with tweezers and just not going. I like this better. Much, much better. Sometimes on these buildings, you are able to pull the button hats the other direction through so that you don't have the little tabs on the outside. Um, just knowing how how tight and small these pieces are uh, lengthwise, I think I'm gonna be just fine building it this way. We're at part of a rocket ship. So the next couple things to go in, um, I'm inclined to wiggle these in first so that I can uh, kind of press them through while I've got some opening capability on here. I'm gonna put my legs on now and work around them for the other parts. Couple that are not. Oh, that's not quite cut. That's gonna get rough. I need. I need to deconstruct a little bit. My openings for my legs are not quite there. So openings for legs are gonna go on the side. Legs are gonna go on the side. Um, there's a little plank to get in the front. It just rests inside the front door. And there's fire for the engine coming out of the bottom. That'll get hooked onto the fancy gray piece that hooks into the bottom. And then lots of these have a little opening in the bottom, so you could potentially put a tea light in here. And there's uh, battery powered tea lights from OESD. So you could have your rocket ship light up from the inside, which is very cool. Um, I'm gonna deconstruct just a little bit and cut my holes just a little wider uh, for my slits. Thanks for joining me today. I know it's kind of a, a watch me work kind of day, but I think that's fun sometimes. And I look forward to seeing you guys in whatever you're joining us for over the next little while. Be safe, be kind, be calm, and we'll see you next. Uh, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. We'll talk later. <laughs> Bye, guys.